action will give first joy. Make ready. Present. Members of Parliament, Sir Charles Hotham and Sir Michael Wharton. Their family crests are shown here alongside those of Town and Kingdom. To mark the 300th anniversary of this market cross, we welcome William Hotham, son of the present Lord Hotham, with his family to cut our ceremonial great cake, specially made from a recipe printed in 1714. Our costume ladies will move amongst you with baskets of cake, 1,000 portions in total, so that we may all enjoy this Georgian luxury. Say, do you want to see a picture of the king and of a coin? And... Uh, Every man a volunteer. I would, I would have thought of joining you, but I didn't like to be made a target like you want. I was like, close on now. Yeah. <laughs> Easily shot. Ah, well, it's code paid for by paid for forward, so uh, can't, can't, can't get us in the mouth. Good, a good target. A good target. They're not part of the No, we're doing well against them. No, no, they're English and war, so. Hello. We largely do leave it to you, it's so. So uh, we do this, so we do the phone, you're next. How's it gone now? Uh, it's a little have met together in this way, and to spend a whole day on it is really a, a, a luxury. I, in a sense, have spent most of my life uh, working on various aspects of the Georgian achievement in the visual arts, and I owe a great deal to my late father, who took me around as a child, virtually, all over England just after the war, and particularly to Georgian houses, and Georgian buildings and great country landscape. And of course, thank you inevitably and most particularly to John for that fabulous lecture that we had and allowing us on his behalf to celebrate his 80th yes. anniversary. 
and I'm bellowing to you, the two people here, by my stand for immediately next to me. But, if, John, if, if I may, and if it's not too embarrassing for you, um, the Georgian group would like to mark this occasion by making you an honorary member of the group. Um, you know it's a long, distinguished line of, of honorary members over our history, and uh, if we may, we'd like to add you to that illustrious list. <laughs> so that's, that's the moment for today. But um, I'm really here just to ask you to raise a glass now, if I may, to our two societies in the late of year, and of course particularly to John Wilson Ely in his age year. John, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> very special thing to have a sympathetic audience, especially when you get some snatches of difficulties. <laughs> and of course, I want to thank Valerie again yeah, for saving the day in such a way, because it's been, for me, a very moving experience. And I want to thank you all for this honor that I've received. Thank you. It's what Lord Derwent said in House Lords, which was calling for the protection of Georgian buildings. He says, Buildings of the 17th century and earlier are well looked after by the Office of Works. That's because the Royal Commission all those things stopped in 1714. It didn't look any buildings after that. <laughs> the Royal Commission 81 19th century buildings, for the most part, are bluff on the landscape and are not worth preserving. <laughs> <laughs> and then he went to say, but 18th century buildings from Anne to the Regency, which at their best epitomise the Augustan age, are not sufficiently appreciated and are being rapidly destroyed. So he, he was putting out a plea for Georgian buildings uh, and, and their preservation. But at that time, East Yorkshire Georgian buildings were being the concern of a young man who, uh, Rupert Alex Smith, who was only 23 or 22 at the time, uh, and he, he was a man who uh, uh, was supposed to be working in the family's timber merchant firm, but really his only interest was art and architecture and other such things. He was just about to be made as the candidate, considered a candidate for one of the whole seats, of course, in the election. But he was responded in a letter, he wrote to the Yorkshire Post in support of Lord Derwent. Lord Derwent, who was on the continent at the time, got all the cuttings and got a cutting from the Yorkshire Post with Rupert's letter in it. So Lord Derwent immediately wrote to Rupert Alex Smith not knowing him at all, to say, you know, how wonderful getting your support. And what he said in his letter was, we must get a society formed. Uh, decided to rebuild the house. He acquired the estate in 1748. 1749 50, before he built the house, he did as many landowners did, he started laying out the grounds. And he got Mr. 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 Perfect from Pontefract, who was a, a, a nurseryman, and moving into landscape gardening to begin the transformation, and half the village was swept away. And what he did, what uh, Richard Sykes thought was perfect, was an avenue going on. There's a narrow avenue, but still village houses are behind the avenue on either side. And just after the grounds were done, he then laid, in, in 1751, the, the first foundation stone of his new house. And the core of the house is in this inn, still in there, somewhere, the house that he built. We don't know what it looked like. They often show you a plan, and they say this is the house of 1751, but that's probably just a design. Quite often, the plans that survive are the plans that were never used. Mm. Uh, and that's the case here, I think, because mm. it doesn't fit the footprint of the house. But the core of that was a 1750 house for Richard Sykes. And so the house was being built, the ground was being built, and he, in 1750, <laughs> But this building uh, it doesn't belong here at all. It came all the way from Fairford House in Gloucestershire and was uh, an early work of Sir John Soane, uh, and uh, dating from the 1790s. And uh, it was did <coughs> came from a house called Fairford House, which was left to the National Trust 
uh, who sold it to the local council, who demolished the house and built a secondary modern school on the site. Right here. This is Code Stone again, like there is on the house. You've probably all heard of Mrs. Code and her yeah. ceramic Thank stone. And uh, well, this sculpture was all set out in the garden here, in the Italian garden and dotted around. And of course, the, the marble with the uh, exposure to the orchid carpet at the time was deteriorating. And then, uh, more latterly, a scholarship on the subject of classical sculptures that uh, made people aware of that these are actually quite major pieces and that they have a value. <laughs> and so they've uh, now been provided with a, a setting which uh, will be uh, protect them but also display them in a way that uh, is some, something similar to what, the way they were displayed at Blair. But Barbara has done a lot of work and I've done a lot of work on him. Really like him. He's a, a very really nice, nice man. Guy, He's a very yes, nice man yes. in all ways. Except this disastrous diplomatic yes, this is, this day, blunder. This is, this is why he's remembered, but because, and sadly because of that, it's like um, Christopher, Christopher Sykes, President Christopher Sykes, the son of the Chatham, uh, has written a book on him recently, uh, which is worth getting. But there are quite a lot of books that refer to, to, to Mark Sykes. But he died in age 39 um, in Paris, Beasley. Um, so he only had, he only had six years, but he's the one who oversaw the rebuilding of the house. Uh, Kevin Moore was an interesting architect. He began his interest in architecture when he was a pupil of the rector of Lonson on the walls. Um, he, was, he was there in his late teenage years um, at Lonson, and he walked over the walls to number the church to see the restoration and met um, Gilbert Scott Cunin. So cross over just a Mark Sykes had the idea during the Second World First World War to put these brass memorials to people who were in his regiment who were killed in the First War. The interesting thing is, that's him, who was put on after he died in the The other ones, as you have This one is Thomas Frankish Carpenter of Sledding. They're not only they're just the people from the village who are part of the regiment. Very few other war memorials ever portray workmen from the village. There's two carpenters and saddlers uh, from the village. Other ones. <laughs> this is all totally Mark Sykes' drawings. We've got the original drawings for it. And the idea for this circular on the story now comes from the Romanesque fonts on the walls. Uh, which is just that sort of cool drawing. But that, the, little, the drawings that he did building up to this <laughs> show that sort of font as the basis for this. 